if you have listened to our previous podcast episodes, then you know how to start your business and what you need to do to have your taxes in order. In today's episode, we are going to talk about one more thing that is necessary to take care of right after opening your business. Welcome to the Business Lessons in Denmark podcast. Our podcast gives the answers to your business-related questions that have not been answered yet or things that haven't even crossed your mind. My name is Adina Bohos and I am here with my colleague Katalin Balog. We are owners of Kula Account CPS, a Danish accounting office. Hi Kati, I was quite busy in the previous months. I decided what I wanted to do. I cho- chose the right company form. I opened my company. I connected uh, it to the digital systems. I opened the company bank account and I set my taxes up. So I think I'm well prepared to start making serious money and uh, take the lead on the list of the richest people in the world. <laughs> so Elon Musk, if you are listening to this podcast, see yourself. <laughs> yeah, that again. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I was just wondering if I could now start sharpening the knives uh, in the kitchen of my Hungarian restaurant, or is there something else to take care of? Actually, there is uh, one more important area that we haven't talked about, namely the area of insurance. If you have employees and assets, it may be important to insure them. And in the case of employees, this is not only important, but done right, mandatory. Oh, really? Yes. If a business has employees, it is mandatory for them to have workers' compensation insurance. So if an employee happens to have an accident at work, I don't know, uh, they burn themselves, fall off a ladder, a chandelier falls on them or whatever happens, then the insurance company pays them the compensation. Uh, Yes, that's logical. Uh, And do I need to have this insurance also for myself as the owner? If you have an APS or AS, then yes. You are also required to have workers' compensation insurance for yourself, regardless of whether you take out salary from your company or not. But if you have a sole proprietorship, then you have a free choice about this. Okay, so if I have a sole proprietorship, it's mandatory for me to have workers' compensation insurance for my employees, but I can decide if I want to have this insurance also for myself. Yes. You will need to think this over. An accident can happen to you too. We hope it won't uh, happen, but we can't know. And uh, if you are not insured, then in the event of a serious accident at work, you could be in a pretty bad situation because you might even lose your ability to work. But if you are not insured, you will not receive a single penny as a compensation. On the other hand, it is generally true for all insurance that it is not free. Obviously, it will cost you some money, perhaps not so little even. So you have to consider how important it is, whether you want to spend money on it. But I would like to emphasize once again that uh, if you have an APS or ES, you have no choice. You must have workers' compensation insurance also for yourself. Okay. Is there any other insurance that is mandatory? If you have a company car, then you must also have liability insurance for the car. It is up to you if you also want to have Casco insurance for your company car, but the liability insurance you must have. Okay, then it works the same way as with private cars. I I guess most people are familiar with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it works the same way. Okay, something else? There is uh, no other mandatory insurance, but there are some that are worth having, and most companies uh, have them. One such insurance is uh, liability insurance. 
uh, is this the insurance that covers the damages that my company accidentally causes and uh, is respons- res- responsible for them? Yes, exactly. If there is any personal or property damage you cause, either you or your employees, then the insurance company pays it. More precisely, they pay above a certain predetermined amount, the, the excess. I actually um, can't think of any damage that can be caused in a restaurant. <laughs> but... Well, incredible things can happen. For example, there is the famous American uh, case from 1992 when a guest burned himself with hot coffee bought at uh, McDonald's and uh, he got $3 million as damages. So who knows? <laughs> it yeah. will be best to have this uh, liability insurance. Yeah, or at least you need to make sure that uh, the goulash soup is not too hot. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, but the goulash soup is, is best when it's hot. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I think it would also make sense to ensure uh, the business premises, right? Uh, the furniture in the restaurant and the professionally equipped kitchen represent uh, quite a high value. If there is a fire or something, it it would be good if the insurance covered the damage. Yes, absolutely. For all businesses that have their own premises, perhaps a warehouse or something like that, it is advisable to have insurance for these. If you rent uh, the premises, then at least for the movables. And, um, well, another type of insurance can be transport insurance. If someone has expensive machines and tools that they might take with them in the company car, to the place of work, it might be wise to insure them in case the company car is broken into or something like that happens. Um, If a company is in trade, for example, does import, export, then again, a transport insurance may be relevant. That was this case in December when uh, 46 containers fell off from uh, one of uh, Maersk uh, cargo ships due to the storm and the entire cost of uh, in, in a part of uh, northern Denmark was covered uh, in uh, injection needles, shoes, refrigerators, and so on. Me- oh, yes, and some of the lo- local residents started collecting <laughs> from the coast, even though the authorities emphasized uh, that they should not, because uh, those goods uh, were actually some as property, so it was quite a mess. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what else is worth insuring? Well, the money in your company bank account. Oh, isn't it safe at the bank? Well, since we live in a digital world, we are used to managing our bank affairs on our bank's internet interface, NetBank in Danish. The only problem is that there are criminals who want to use this to their advantage. If a private person becomes a victim of a hacker attack, a bank, the bank usually covers the damage. However, if this happens to companies, in other words, if a hacker hacks into your net bank and empties your company bank account, then the bank will not compensate you for your loss. No, is the money lost then? Yes. Unless you have a so-called net bank insurance that covers your damages in such a case. Done. Uh, well, I will definitely have this net bank insurance, so I won't lose millions from my account and fall short against Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smart decision. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else I should think about? Well, perhaps the sickness benefit insurance. If you have employees, the first 30 days of sickness benefit must be paid by you as the employer. But if you have this insurance, then from the first or the third day of the illness, depending on how you made the insurance, the sick benefit (coughs) will not be your cost. As for your own possible illness, if you are self-employed, you will receive sick benefit after two weeks of illness. But if you have such uh, sick benefit insurance, 
then again, you may receive money from the first or the third day. Yes, if a company has a lot of absences due to illness, then, then such an insurance may pay off. Mm. Or if you want to insure yourself as a self-employed person for the duration of possible illnesses, uh, then this may also make sense. Yes, exactly. Well, there are other insurances as well, but the insurance companies uh, can actually help you decide what kind of insurance might be relevant for your company and how it is advisable to insure your business. Obviously, the insurance companies want to sell their insurance, but my experience is that they usually inform people in a fair way. And of course, you can always say no. <laughs> Except for mandatory insurances. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can't say no for those. But apart from that, with other insurances, you decide whether you want them or not. Okay, clear. Uh, I actually have an idea of what kind of insurance I should have for my Hungarian restaurant. What should I do now? There are quite many insurance companies in Denmark, and the best is to ask for three quotes from three different insurance companies for the insurances you want to have. And then uh, you can decide uh, which one will be the most favorable for you. The SIG benefit insurance is the only insurance that you don't get with traditional insurance companies, but with uh, would be tailing Denmark. This is the state institution that administers the payment of various social benefits. Okay, I understand. Well, we have sorted out this uh, topic then, and we have uh, come to uh, come to the end of today's episode, unfortunately. Thank you, Kati, for the useful uh, insights, and we also thank the listener for staying with us. Next Monday, we will come back with some more useful information to further help your business. Today's episode was sponsored by Kulakan CPS. Kulakan CPS can help with starting your company with bookkeeping and tax matters. In addition, we also provide business and financial consulting. If you don't want to miss useful and up-to-date information, follow us and like our Facebook page. You can contact us via our website, www.accounts.cool. We wish you a successful week.